I'm going to say that I always talk about, I think of this as being new work as opposed to the work that I did before. And my artist friends that know me, they, they're used to hearing me talk and, and they're going, a lot of times they're saying, what, what new work? You know, you've been working for years. The work doesn't look that different, I think, as it appears to me. So I hear myself talking about uh, new, the newer work and the work before, and I finally pinned it down. And for all purposes, I'm going to say the work, I'm going to use Katrina. I'm going to talk about the work prior to the hurricane, prior to Katrina, and the way I've worked since then, because that's when I really pinned down that there was a change, a dramatic change from, from me. And um, it was gradual, but it was a, a, a real change in the way that I work. And I think that happened for two reasons. Uh, first of all, I think that, that the chaos of the hurricane of Katrina made uh, many people, uh, it, it stopped you in your tracks, and a lot of artists struggle with a way to express express their feelings and I think they did it in many ways and it was to capture a lot of artists wanted to capture the chaos but for me the first work that I showed after that and a viewer actually helped me understand what had happened I could not deal with trying to express by saying more so that was the point that I can look back and measure that I wanted to, to say a lot, but I wanted to do it by simplifying, by simplifying the, the landscape. I wanted to start abstracting the landscape. Prior to that, I always drew on the urban landscape, primarily New Orleans, where I was born. And in, in that landscape, which would be park-like or tropical, I would set uh, maybe a, a, a little, dog. So I was using imagery then, or a, 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 shat, a, a person partially obscured behind a tree. I was using imagery. And that just maybe had even become less satisfying before Katrina. But after that, I could not bring myself to, at any time I tried to start a painting in the way I had been painting, I just had such a an aversion, and it was a painful thing because I love imagery, I love narrative painting, and I didn't feel like that was my direction anymore. I wanted to simplify the landscape. So that was the first thing that happened. And the next thing that happened was I got really weary of the way I had been, you know, you paint with a brush, then you start thinking if it's on paper, you have to, how, how do I mat it, put a frame around it, or you, if, if it's not on paper under glass, you, oh, you have to deal with mat, glass, frame. If it's a canvas, you have to think of a proper frame. And I got even that. I didn't, I didn't want to think about that anymore. So I began to think more three-dimensionally. And it was all gradual, but I began, and I was not, I mean, I'd never done anything three-dimensional. So the, I thought, how? You know, I mean, it was a daunting task, but also it was exciting because, you know, I was, I was going to learn something new, uh, you know, teach myself to start thinking three-dimensionally. So those two things uh, became apparent, and at the same, so I would, and I always have painted, and for the last 15 years I've worked with encaustic monotype. I always go back and forth between the two. So, in the studio, I found myself trying to think of the new concerns that I had, as well as continue to uh, work back and forth between encaustic monotype and painting and bring it all together. It, it felt very unwieldy, but I, you know, just over these last years, I've tried to bring it all together. So my first, in my last show, my, my work consisted of painted panels which I started, I would paint a panel of wood. So I thought of, I thought of myself as being able to hold whole paint. I mean, this was, this was not um, anything that was so dramatic, dramatic, but to me it was huge. So my last show, I was actually assembling the paintings 
in my encaustic monotypes to get away from the prints, I started thinking of wood objects to, you know, to print on wood so that they could stand alone. So I kept working and um, I'm, this is two years ago, the last show, I had a show here two years ago. So for this show, I didn't show the three dimensional things I was working on. I had paintings and I, my effort to deal with the three dimension of, was to put them on these cradle panels so that they don't need framing, but they actually seem to float out uh, as if, you know, I kind of cut a piece out of the sky. So the, um, hmm, lost my train of thought. My concern also extended into how I was putting the paint on my paintings. So because of the encaustic monotypes, I began to try to think of dealing with paint differently. So the, the, that's another change between the old work and this work. I've used very little brushes to get this paint onto the, uh, you know, to make these paintings. I painted on paper because I like paper. Um, if I'm working on big sheets of paper, they can be manipulated, they can be held, they can be turned. I found a way to adapt the table that I've always used as an easel. I had a, a stainless steel top fabricated for it. So I began to think of the paint, of using that table to paint, flood with paint and take my paper and actually without brushes to manipulate. And I don't totally rule out brushes, but a lot of the work I'm doing, I'm doing by dragging, by lifting, by moving it around without brushes. I am masking off, and, um, but that, that's about it. I masked off a certain area and then I began to work, um, just work the paper. And until I like what I've got, there are many layers of paint on here. I'm using a lot of medium and I'm using fluid acrylics. All of this has helped me to get to this, uh, to these, uh, you know, to this, what I call this new way of working. Now, one thing that I did keep is the intense value changes, which has always interested me. And uh, so I kept, uh, you know, that still is very important to me. And the other thing is that I try to put as much emotion into these simplified areas, uh, these divisions in the painting, I tried to put as much emotion into that as I um, did when I was making these little narrative, the narrative paintings. Um, I like really a, a, a very light, a mid-range color and a, and a very, very dark color. That's generally clear in this painting a very light area, mid-range, and a very dark color. And, you know, I think I can just, I want to do it all with that, so.